Welcome to a day of prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to a day of prayer's morning Bible study. My name is Promise, and we are so glad you could join us. Before we get into the Word, let's open up in prayer. Lord, I thank you for giving us the grace we need to do your will, Lord, and showing us exactly what we need to know, Lord, and giving us your wisdom, Lord, so that we are able to do it smoothly, Lord, and that we are able to bring about your will, Lord. And, Lord, we humble ourselves before you, Lord, and allow you to teach us and guide us, Lord, so that we are able to understand you, Lord, and be able to... Well, I'd say do your will again, Lord, and that we're able to love you more efficiently, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Amen. Well, good morning and welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you with us as we get into the Word, continuing our study of the book of Zechariah. Excuse me. And this morning, we are still in chapter 5, covering verses 5 through 11. So whether you're joining us for the first time or you're rejoining us, I want to encourage you to go ahead and pause the episode and just take a moment to read through that section of scripture to make things easier to follow along in the discussion. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. And the floor is now open to give each of you the opportunity to share what Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you and to ask any questions that you have. So who'd like to begin? I will. All right, promise. Okay, so in the previous episode, we began talking about, I believe it might have been implied, that the woman inside of the basket was also talking about the woman on top of the sky with beast inside and Babylon the Great in Revelation 17 and 18. And so Layla Layla began talking about um, how we're supposed to get rid of it completely, not simply bury it to dig it back up again and retake it. And so the Lord first, um, the Lord first had me going deeper to, in that section, going to Revelation seventeen, verse six, um, the last half. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Then we shall continue, um, on to, well, seven through eight. But the angel said to me, "Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman." And of the beast, beast that carries her, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw was and is not, and will send out the bombless pit and go to perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. And then I, we shall go to Revelations 18, 4 through 5. And I heard another voice. This is talking about the fall of Babylon the Great. And I heard another voice coming from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. And I'll stop there. And so what we see here is that the Lord is also telling us not to be caught up or concerned with what we think is amazing. Always have God's perspective concerning it. Um, going back to Zechariah, we see here the Lord is drawing the people's attention to it and also what is happening. The basket is being removed, as Dad says. And I would like to draw up, um, people don't really worship what they don't find amazing. For example, I'm not going to eat a whole bunch of things they don't like. For example, asparagus. I'm not going to sit down to a plate full of asparagus. I'm not going to deliberately seek it out to eat it because it's now among my favorites. Mm-hmm. I'm only going to seek out to eat what I like or what I like the most. The same applies here. You only worship what someone finds amazing or they marvel at, which is what we see inside of Revelations. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord is also saying for us to get our focus, as Mama you said, we have a funnel vision. We think what we're doing is more amazing or, well, important than what we see inside of heaven. 
and I'll say, believe inside of Revelations 15. Um, let me flip there. Hmm. Okay, it's not Revelations 15, but it talks about how that amidst all of the signs, all of the things that are happening in Revelations, it says, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And he who, I believe it says, he who goes into, he who um, captivates, well, he who puts someone else in captivity is going to be put in captivity, and whoever kills with a sword is going to be killed with a sword. That is Revelation thirteen ten. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and faith of the saints. Okay, thank you, Lord Charles. You're welcome. And here we have going back to Zechariah about the woman. The only way to the only reason for the woman to be thrust back into the basket, she was coming up, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. If someone's sitting down, you don't need to push them back in their seats. They're already in their seat. Mm-hmm. And so, going back to what Layla was saying, the Lord is also saying, get your focus off of that and focus on what he is saying. And also saying, as Dad said, put away the sin from you. And also make sure it has no place to come back. Going back to um, taking away the basket to the land of Shinar. And how it's no longer near us. And it's taken away to somewhere where we cannot seat or take it back again we have to travel to it then going back to um revelations 18 saying come out of her and do not marvel about the um this is me quoting and paraphrasing in also what the lord is saying he's also saying come out of her and do not marvel or try to um ponder over it or worship what is happening Keep your eyes on God no matter what. And we also see that, come, we see that the same thing throughout the entire book of Zechariah. Keep your eyes on God. Do not become distracted to the left or to the right. And God, and you're always going to keep straight. Then going to, which brings us to Revelations 22, about what, were you, what you were talking about, Mommy. About how that is the ultimate outcome. The people who are too busy trying to, instead of seeing it from God's vision, the people that are too busy trying to look at it through a microscope or try to focus in on something else, they end up missing the big picture. And as a result, for example, for a door, there's been plenty of times when I've walked through a building, I've missed a door. and I'm supposed to be going through that door. I have to be led to or guided to it. And so if we're too busy trying to um, keeping our microscopic view, we're never going to see the door to what God has for us. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Amen. Thank you, Promise. The Charles. Okay, so I have gotten clarification on the um, what I was referring to in the first um, a, a few couple episodes, episodes back, mm-hmm. okay. in which I have been asking the Lord about what was the difference here. The difference here. Give us the fill difference. us back what, in. Okay. Yes. What does that mean, sir? So I was asking the Lord in comparison to when we see Paul was let out through a basket okay. out of the city when he was in Damascus, mm-hmm. um, how he was let out. And I was asking the Lord, uh, what was the takeaway? What is the thing I should be gleaning from this? And the Lord reminded me and he brought me to, um, in some of my Bible, it has a little sub note saying that this was a measuring container she was in. Mm-hmm. And then so I asked the question, what, um, actually, I won't ask the question now. But what the Lord was revealing to me was that it was a misusing of what the Lord had provided. Uh-huh. Meaning, Wickedness always twists. Um, the, when you think of a wicker basket, it, the word wick in that, like wicker and wickedness, means twisting of what is naturally straight or something. And it also gives a con- connotation of twisting the word of God, changing its shape to make it fit something else. Um, so that's what the word that wicking part of the word wicker and wicked they go together twisting of yes. what's of righteousness twisting of what was straight the word of god and the path of god is straight right and it's narrow but wickedness twists and curves and all that other kind of stuff go ahead in which the lord was showing me that it was a misusing of what the lord had provided and what the lord was guiding them to do and the lord reminded me of the um, um of the scriptures where he said, you guys honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. 
Mm-hmm. And we understand that this is um, going back to, they have just come back from captivity and are starting to rebuild the temple, the second temple. Mm-hmm. And how the most decay that the Lord referred to and was talking about was um, the spiritual decay of Israel at that okay. point. Okay. Was that they were outwardly saying they're worshiping God while worshiping idols. We see that inside of Ezekiel 18, um, 8, where he said, come see what every man's doing in private when he thinks no one sees him. Mm-hmm which is what she referred to, Layla, trying to hide from God and thinking that nobody or the Lord can't see you if you're in a dark corner. And the Lord was revealing to me that it's significant if you read it, how the angel lifted up the lid off of it. Then he closed the lid again. So Zechariah could see what was inside of it. Mm -hmm. And if you just think of it in the regard of when something is lifted up and you can open something, as you promised mentioned, something can come forth, come out. Mm -hmm. But when you're understanding that when there's always a moment in time in your life where the door you physically open it, it's never something that it just comes upon you and you're um, helpless against it. When you're, when it comes to sin, yes, you have to to open the door to sin. Now there's sin nature, right? But yes, the door to wickedness has to be intentionally opened. And yes, insisting upon sin when you especially when you know right from wrong that is wickedness yes okay and this goes back i'll tie, keep tying this back to ezekiel chapter 8 is where he lifted up the basket that was like the lord revealing to ezekiel come and see what they're doing in secret there was first inside of this there was first a exposing of what was happening uh addressing of it and then a sealing away and then being taken um away and that's something that people often miss and when they're for, being forgiven of sin. there's a You still have to address it. Because the Lord forgives you does not mean that you're going to skate away from all consequences, which is what people think of it as. They think they say, Lord, forgive me. No consequences can touch me. And yeah, I'll just I'm back up real quick. They're playing tag with sin and the devil and playing tag with wickedness. And they think, I'm on home base. And the consequence or the curse goes, oh, Oh man, I can't get you right now. And then they they step their foot off while they keep pinky on, you know, if the 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 tree was home base, they keep a pinky on the tree while they're looking around and and going out as far as they can. And it's just that little tippy tippy tip tip of their fingertip that's still touching it. And then when they see something, they want to jump back. I'm on home base. You can't touch me. No, 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 no. <laughs> that does not fool anyone. That doesn't fool the Lord, and it dishonors Him. And that person deceives themselves because they will surely, their sin will surely find them out. Yes, mommy. And then this correlates to what um, you have been talking about, like inside of um, Revelation 18 and 17. I I was asking the Lord about that as well. There was, um, if you look at it on the surface, what was Babylon compared to any other city? What caused Babylon to be so evil compared to other cities that the have evil been destroyed? that anyone else was doing? Yes. Because they had a knowledge of God. Mm-hmm. They yes. knew him and yet con- continued and persisted in um, idolatry, paganism, self-worship, fornications, abominations, all the other, all the things that Enslaving God said was there. Enslaving the people, trying to find their own way to heaven. And you see that under Nimrod and the Tower and it, of Babel. And it's not like God's heaven. It's a replacement of god heaven it's not like they were just trying to make it in no they're trying to replace god so twisting every kind of twisting of the things of god that imaginable that's what they were doing there yes or you have in this and what you're saying here sir the i'll say opposite end of the spectrum but reverse aspect of what the lord talked about in the parables right he said no one takes their light and hides it under a bushel right or under a basket. Yes. Or, under a, or under a basket. Here we have the same, I'll say similar concept, right? They're trying to, uh, well, I'll say it in this way first. So people take the Lord and try to sometimes put them under a basket, but say, I have this, right? And they hide it from others as opposed to letting their light or the light of the Lord shine in and through them. But thinking, I'm safe, I have this. Well, it's addressing now, because of the manifold wisdom of the Lord, every aspect on, if you will, on this spectrum, right? People like to hold on to sin and wickedness while trying to let their light shine, 
thinking I have this. And as we brought up in previous episodes, no one knows about it, but I can go back and indulge in these things and no one will be the wiser. But that's not how it works with the Lord. He's always aware. His eyes mm-hmm. roam to and fro. Mm-hmm. But he's looking for someone who can show himself strong on their behalf. But we have to be willing to remove those things that don't reflect his character, nature, and attributes in our life. Yes, Dan? And then so as I was asking the Lord about that and while I was going through it, the Lord was revealing to me and he had me go to Ezekiel. This is chapter 16 now. And I'll just start in verse 13 and go to 14. Thus you were adorned with gold and silver, and your clothing was of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. You ate pastry of fine flour, honey, and oil. You were exceedingly beautiful and succeeded to royalty. Your fame went out among the nations because of your beauty, for it was perfect through my splendor, which I had bestowed on you, says the Lord. And I'll st- Actually, I'll read verse 15. But you trust in your own beauty, play the harlot because of your fame, and poured out your harlotry on everyone passing by who would have it. And just on un- this also correlates to what's happening here is that as you and uh and everybody else has been bringing up that what was written on her was the mother and of harlots that was part of the title on her head and that's also something that we have to understand when the lord refers to harlotry sometimes it is but more more importantly, when he's referring to Israel and what he was talking to them, he was talking about going after other gods and worshiping okay, them. Okay, so it always is. But you you mean sometimes he's talking about the literal, physical, like... Yes. Person has a, a business or set up to have... Um, to fornicate openly with other a people for a, a cost. Right. Um, sometimes he's talking about specifically that business of prostitution, literally. Yes, mommy. But then when he talks about it in a spiritual sense to Israel, he's talking about their worship of idolatry because he says that they were married to him, betrothed to him, his yes. wife, and yet they defiled themselves by going after other lovers. Yes. Okay. And how when we understand that, that's what the Lord's referring to. And as she said, Mommy, it was because Babylon had a knowledge of God and they understood who God was, but they continued to worship lift up other evil. gods. Yes, and this is what we see here. And the Lord was, he asked me the question in this verse in the scripture, and he said, why are they building a shrine for it? If they ha- Something they find of value or significance or importance in their life. I mean that in a greater sense, the Lord was revealing to me is, um, like where it said inside the book of Kings, they would tear down the altar and they would just keep throwing it back up. I'll rebuild it after whatever. And make it way. stronger and all that, right. And yeah, well, you can't take away from me thing that i desire yes and that's uh-huh. what the lord's revealing to me is that he had already destroyed this he had already given them a chance to come out but they willingly sought to rebuild it mm-hmm. it wasn't like something that just stands up and you're just there <laughs> and you just go back because you've always known it they had to willingly seek it out and desire to have this shrine well, they let's, gathered let's the some bricks they points. gathered they called in the stone worker they said chisel this thing yeah chisel it hard and make it set up and they found a spot and a location for it they waited the time necessary for it to be finished its completion of construction and then put it there and then proceeded to worship so that's like when we talk about crimes in 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 america in particular murder is probably the highest crime uh next to treason um, for your country but the person to person crime and one thing that's always that always is looked at is was it premeditated did you think about this beforehand? And what was your motives? Those are two things. Did I say one thing that's always looked at? <laughs> I always do that. Okay. Two things that are looked at is, did you think about this ahead of time? Did you plan this out? Did you premeditate this? Meditate means you dwelled on it. You thought on it. You muttered it to yourself. And pre means beforehand. Did you premeditate this? Right. That same thing that God said to Joshua, meditate on my word (laughs) day and night. (laughs) Keep it before your eyes. That way you may be prosperous and and excel and succeed in life. Did you do that concerning murder? And then you did this ahead of time all the way till you got to the, the execution of it. Okay, that says something. And then right behind that comes why? What were your motives about this? So. They premeditated. Your shrine doesn't just go, ooh, like how Aaron just said, hey, I just threw this gold in there and this calf popped out. Nope. 
God is not. There was planning, that. coordination, and the like. You carved a mold. You waited and sweated in that heat. Next to the next to the fire while it melted, you stirred it and you waited. You poured the mold. You waited for it to cool. You, you popped the calf out of the mold and stood it up. And then made sure it was all in one piece. Took off the excess, right? So there was there was work involved. But you polished it. So let's understand mm-hmm. it in context to this, right? Or greater context. What's the Lord looking for? Our hearts to be faithful and loyal to him. Okay. And he's coming back for who or what? Faith. His His church. His bride. His bride. His faithful believers. Who exhibit, exactly. And his bride exhibits his character, his nature, and his attributes. They also exhibit exclusive loyalty to him. A bride preserves herself, sanctifies herself. And keeps herself for her husband alone. That's spirit, soul, and body, mind, will, and emotions. All of those things are reserved for her husband. No one else gets to touch your fiddle faddle or nothing. And she's not secretly uh, diving off in her imaginations of another man. No, but it's about this one. And then we've already made the connection points to Revelation 17 and 18, right? Mm-hmm. It is not unlike Jezebel being a representation, right, of this great harlot, Right, as which what it says in seventeen, mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. Hmm. Right, but what does this woman Babylon say? Right, this this great harlot. It says that I, she says in her heart, I sit as queen, and I am no widow, and will not see sorrow. Hmm. So. We have the same aspect that we saw in all, all these other examples that were given, right? You have the Lord saying, hey, I'm the King of kings and Lord of lords. So if we're the bride of Christ, then, then clearly there is an aspect of rulership, of authority, of the bride would be of Christ, would be his queen, right? If you will. Now, right, to, to rule alongside, right? That's what the, the queen typically does. Yes? Mm-hmm. Rules yes. alongside the king, still under well, the authority of the king. And I'll say it just depends. She has special honor. We'll exactly. say that yes. to be to be least, because God doesn't need a, a fourth Correct. part of he the sure God. He's got that locked. <laughs> but right, we absolutely. are allotted special authority and honor as a as a, a bride a, to a king, a queen is allotted special honor and and joint heirs mm-hmm. with That's Christ right. is is the portion for the bride of Christ. To be under portion his authority. allotted, right. Amen. So mm-hmm. So there's that. But now you have, well, Babylon, right? This harlot who's trying to put herself, insert herself in a position as queen. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Amen. Yes. Which is why the the need for this house or altar or whatever to be built up for this, this harlot Babylon to sit on top of it and attempting to control, manipulate, and all the rest of it through violence or Mm -hmm. whatever means necessary Mm -hmm. for her to sit in that place. But who is she serving? Herself. Well, herself and ultimately the devil, the adversary, the Satan, or or as it's viewed in Revelation, the dragon. But I would would have to say, I mean, we'll probably pick this up on another episode, but I have to say that um, because all of creation was made to be subject to god and then and uh-huh. an inferior vessel if you will like women we are not physically as strong and all that stuff as men We're, sure god loves us equally he doesn't have favorites in that capacity um but of uh, an inferior to the male is the female in the the physical sense so i have uh-huh. to say that i think this this also this represents satan because oh, he was an inferior and he was made he was created to maintain his heavenly assignment correct his divine alignment with the lord which meant he was subject to god and he said no i will no longer have a covering over my head Mm -hmm. i will no longer be subject to your will but i'm going to replace you and i'm going to sit on your throne god and i'm going to be god instead of you and then you're going to worship me because what did he think was going to happen right and I'm going to be God. I'm going to rule over everything. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to do. I'm, 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 I'm going to be the one that's in authority instead of the one who is under authority. Correct. Yes. And there's more to it. So we are going to have to go on with another episode. But um, we want to 
start those seeds there, <laughs> as it were. Amen. All right? Mm-hmm. Well, let's pause there for today. So with that, can I get a volunteer to close this out in prayer, please? I will. All right, promise. Lord, I thank you for giving us your mercy, Lord, and showing us how we're able to show it toward, uh, toward others, Lord. And Lord, I also thank you for loving us abundantly, Lord, and that we're able to reciprocate your love toward us, Lord, and to those around us. Lord, we also thank you and we ask for your grace and mercy and to be able to do your work, Lord, and to, to be able to show it towards other, others, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. In amen. Jesus' amen. almighty name, amen. And amen. Well, we love you. God bless you. And have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, take care and God bless you.